So we have a little bit of a warning that I wanted to go ahead and share in regards to Tesla stock in this video. And so if you're someone who's invested in Tesla or you trade Tesla stock, you're probably going to want to watch this video in its entirety as there's a couple of things I want to go ahead and share from a fundamental perspective, of course, a technical perspective, and then also just the macroeconomic environment and how that's kind of shaping the moves that we're seeing in regards to the price action for Tesla stock. And so uh, there's a couple of things I want to go ahead and touch on. Now, recently, I talked about just a couple of videos ago. And again, I don't delete these videos. I like to keep them up there because I think it's important to have a record on file. And so I shared how we were likely to have Tesla stock rise up. And I wanted to see it go to that 219 area before I ultimately actually trim into my position. Yes trim meaning selling some shares and we actually indeed hit $219.98 so pretty much $220 uh, and we actually close I guess if you see we kind of had the shadow over here hitting that 220 uh, basically and we close that 216 and I want to go ahead and share why I'm trimming some of my shares with Tesla but just a friendly reminder that just because I'm doing something doesn't mean that you should copy. You should only trade and invest in whatever you see value in. And yes, just because I've been right about Tesla a multitude of different times in the past, like how I talked about we were going to have this massive rally with Tesla and the shorts were going to get squeezed and how I also made a video how Tesla stock was likely to fall down after it was getting rejected by this descending trend line and how uh, we were seeing this correctional phase in the market with more diversity going into a lot of different names. And then recently saying how we were going to see Tesla stock rise up just because I've gotten the price action right in the past with Tesla multiple times. It's not indicative of the future performance, right? Just because I've got it right in the past, I could be wrong in the future. And so I just want to provide that quick reminder that again, this is just my view about Tesla stock. Now, I want to go ahead and kind of start off this video with a bit of the positives in regards to Tesla stock. Now, I recently shared this chart from the US Department of Energy on my community post on YouTube. So hint, hint, if you're not subscribed to the channel, consider subscribing because sometimes I drop little charts like this that you'll see only if you're subscribed to the channel uh, and you get those community posts. But ultimately, what I was kind of highlighting is that long term, we have something that's pretty beneficial for Tesla, right? And it's a saying how pretty much EV chargers may outpace uh, gas by 2032. Now, that's not too far away from now. And you see this trend of pretty much the infrastructure for EVs just growing. And this kind of pretty much knocks out that other side of the argument of people saying that EVs are just a fad because it's clear that we're seeing the infrastructure grow. And there's a reason why the infrastructure is growing. There's this really a big adoption taking place for EVs. We're seeing a lot more uh, EVs being produced. And another example of that is if we actually take a look at Lamborghini, right? Because Lamborghini, they introduced a new model. I'm not going to go ahead and pronounce the name because I'm going to butcher it. I'm not good at pronouncing Italian names. Uh, but this is actually a model that has a few EV elements. For example, it has a V8 twin turbo engine paired with three electric motors. And so again, we're even seeing Lamborghini kind of now transition into the EV space. And, you know, you have those individuals that say, oh, EVs are never going to make it because you want to feel the power of a car. You want to hear that roar of the engine. And <clears throat> again, we're seeing models or companies that are famously known for having that nice driving experience kind of have that combination of, you know, the internal combustion engines now kind of bringing in some EV elements. And so again, kind of highlighting that we're having this EV adoption. And so that's good news for Tesla because of course, Tesla benefits even if there's other EV competitors. I know that takes away from the market share, but of course, Tesla is also an energy business. And so the more EV vehicles out there, the better that Tesla could kind of grow its EV or its energy segments of the company. And so that's actually the next point I wanted to go ahead and share. And this is kind of a bit of a pro and then a bit of a con. And so what we're looking at here 
is a statement of operations. And what we're seeing here is Q2 2024, which we want to compare it from the year prior in Q2 2023. And there's a couple of things I want to go ahead and highlight. Now, I went ahead and I just uh, put this in a nice little spreadsheet uh, to kind of show the revenue segments as a percentage of total revenue. So you see, I just kind of copied the information from their statement of operations and I put it here just on you know a little chart because sometimes it's just easier to have that visual of what's going on uh, because I know a lot of people may not even uh, really be a big fan of kind of parsing through the numbers and that's okay, right? And so one of the things that's pretty notable is that the automotive revenues of the company actually declined from Q2 uh, two of 2023 to Q2 of 2024 and that kind of has to do with a bit of the macro picture we know that we're in an environment that's not favorable for financing vehicles i mean even you know someone with a good credit score for example i just checked i'm at 830 even if i were to finance a new vehicle i'm looking at an eight percent interest rate which is insane considering the fact that you know when i financed my vehicle many years ago it's paid off now but when i financed it it was 4%, and I thought that was a lot at the time. So imagine people with horrible credit, right? They're looking at 12 13 maybe even 14%. And so that's not good uh, for an environment of vehicles being purchased. And so that's why we're seeing uh, total automotive revenues decline. We're not seeing as many EVs being uh, purchased from Tesla. And that's <clears throat> a bit concerning, especially when we know that this makes up a large portion of Tesla's business. Tesla ultimately, yes, it's a tech company. It's an energy company, but it's pretty much at the moment still a majority of a car company. Now, the positive is, and this alludes to what I was sharing about the trend of energy, is that we actually saw the energy segments of Tesla double, right? Nearly double, right? We went from 6.5% uh, or 6.05% to almost 12%. So nearly almost doubling. And again, if you extrapolate this, we're likely to see Tesla as the company matures have more of an increase in its other segments and of course we have other segments of tesla that we're very optimistic for like the optimus robot but of course that's not something we're talking about now because you really can't put a valuation on something that hasn't been pretty much proven and out there right i remember one of the previous earnings calls elon mentioned that they only made about six of them and that's pretty difficult to make them. So that's why I'm not even uh, factoring that into uh, pretty much our analysis of Tesla. But we are optimistic for that, right? But the concern is the macroeconomic environment and particularly, you know, how that's impacting the delivery. So over here we have uh, from Troy Treslake, who is a, you know, independent auto analyst. And he does a lot of good charts for, you know, Tesla's data. And he highlighted the deliveries from Q1 and Q2 of 2023. Uh, to 2024 and kind of just showing the delta the difference between both of them and what we see is that in a lot of markets we actually see deliveries down and this is bad right we're looking at the united states europe and china and these are the largest markets right canada yeah it had an improvement but does it really matter when canada doesn't really order that many evs there's not that many deliveries in comparison to pretty much the United States and Europe and China where we see vehicle deliveries in the six figure realm, right? That, that, that doesn't really matter about Canada, right? And I'm not to, you know, disrespect my my buddies over in Canada, right? But the concern is that right now it's not a favorable environment. And this could also be due to the fact that Canada has already started cutting rates. They were, were the first to hike rates and they were actually the first to cut rates. So their monetary policy is a bit ahead of a lot of the European, uh, you know, mon uh, central banks and also our central bank, the Federal Reserve. We're, we're kind of always behind the curve. And the concern is you, you see that Europe has this big drop. And if we actually look at this, uh, you know, <clears throat> chart over here showing the sales in Europe, we see that pretty much there's this historic, uh, like, pattern where you see that in Q4, you see in 2021, that was a big, you know, area where there was a lot of deliveries. So you see that in 2022 Q4, you see that in 2023 Q4, right? Although it did kind of uh, fall down a bit, uh, but we're kind of seeing the, you know, last quarters historically do very well. And the concern is that we may not see that for this year of Q4 for 2024 and that's of course due to the macroeconomic environment and yes 
we are having the Federal Reserve likely start to cut rates sometime, uh, you know, when they have their meeting in September. I forget exactly the exact date. But one thing I want everyone to remember is just because the Federal Reserve may start cutting in, the next, in September, it doesn't change things immediately. It takes time for the economy to actually feel the ramifications of these rate cuts, right? Just like it took time for the economy to feel the ramifications of the rate hikes. It's not like things get hiked and things change overnight. It takes some time. And so there's a couple of things I want to go ahead and touch on. But real quick, just a quick plug for those that haven't done so already. I have a free weekly newsletter where every single Sunday I send out pretty much what are some things that we want to be mindful of in regards to not only just Tesla stock, but just the broader markets in general. And what are some things that we're looking into in regards to the economy? And guys, it's completely free. Just put in your email and every single week you get an email of pretty much some things that I'm looking at. And we go into some details, not as much details as I do within uh, for those within the Push and Profit Private Group. But we definitely share a lot of information. And again, guys, it's free. You could always just unsubscribe at any time. Uh, but <clears throat> there's a couple of things that we want to talk about. So ultimately, the macro environment is not that favorable for Tesla. But from a fundamental perspective, or I'm sorry, from a technical perspective, looking at the charts, right? And you guys know that if you have watched the channel before that the technicals is kind of not something I put a huge weighting on, but it's something that I like to watch. And one of the things is, yes, I did say that Tesla was likely to kind of rise up and actually uh, rose up higher because, uh, of course, Tesla is a high beta stock. It actually did uh, relatively much better than the S&P 500 as uh, we go ahead and map it from the close, the low of August 5th to pretty much the close, the high where we are now. That was like a 16% jump in comparison to the S&P 500 where pretty much from the close of the bottom on August 5th to where we are now was just 8%. So again, Tesla, Tesla's, you know, I say this all the time, it's a high beta stock. And so if the overall trend is, is going upwards in the market, we tend to see Tesla oftentimes follow. But of course, we do see some deviations with that, just like what we saw uh, for the majority of 2024, where Tesla wasn't doing well. We actually had Tesla pretty much lagging behind while, you know, the markets in 2024 was going up. Uh, and so that's, that's something that we want to be mindful of. But one of the things that we want to know is that from a technical perspective, we're actually at an area where it was a resistance in the past, right? You see that over here. And it was also a support in the past and, you know, a resistance. So you, you see that area kind of having a psychological impact on Tesla stock. Every time we're around these areas, it tends to act as a shelf or a ceiling. Now, when we kind of zoom in to Tesla stock, right? What we see is there's a lot of volume relative or very little volume relative to price. I, I want to correct myself. And so if we start to get some selling pressure around over here, well, that could push the order books down a bit for Tesla. And that's what I believe is likely to take place. I think that Tesla, even if it does have a few more green days, I don't think it's going to go ahead and break out of this descending trend line that has been pretty prominent for the last uh, three years. And ultimately, what I'm doing, and again, this is just what I'm doing, you guys only do whatever you see value in, is I'm actually just trimming a bit of my position in Tesla, and I'm sprinkling it into different segments of my portfolio. Uh, for example, I won't share it all, you know, I'll probably share it for those within the Push and Profit Private Group, but even names like NVIDIA, I'm a bit more optimistic, uh, simply because we're seeing that we're still having a lot of companies invest heavily into trying to be a dominant uh, performing uh, company within the AI segment of, of the world. And we know that NVIDIA is a beneficiary of that. And so that's why even though, yeah, NVIDIA fell down heavily as we had this correction, NVIDIA actually was the one who was led back within the Magnificent 7 in terms of the price action in the jump. If we go ahead and look at, you know, NVIDIA from August 5th, you know, the, the close in August 5th. Let me actually uh, get this right over here. So from the close of August 5th, I can't for some reason get it right, but from the close to where we are now, uh, the close of recently, it was a 35% jump. And so NVIDIA is likely to go ahead and uh, continue going up. The trend, the primary trend of NVIDIA is still there, right? The secondary trend, and this is kind of just pulling from the ten, uh, tenets of the Dow theory, uh, or pretty much the foundation of technical analysis. While we had this kind of you know bearish pattern over here, 
the overall long picture of Nvidia is pretty bullish. And so again, you know, just because I'm selling, you know, my shares of Tesla, not all of them, but you know, kind of rotating a bit out of Tesla and going into Nvidia and a few other names doesn't mean you have to do so. Again, I'm still bullish on Tesla in the long term, and I believe that their energy segments are going to uh, continue to dominate. But right now, I think that while we're still in an area where we're likely to see some pockets of weakness from a fundamental perspective, I don't see Tesla going much higher. And if it does, it's not really fundamentally sound at the moment. Uh, and so that's something that is uh, kind of concerning, and that's why I'm putting out this warning. And again, you guys do whatever you see value in. Uh, but hopefully you guys got some value in today's video. Again, just a friendly reminder that if you haven't done so already, make sure to check out the first link to join my free weekly Market Post Insights. It's essentially a newsletter that every single week I send out. So definitely check that out. And with that said, I'll see you guys on this next video right over here. Take care.